Hello there and good morning. The House of Lords is set to recommence its assault on democracy and due process when it continues its deliberations on Yvette Cooper's EU withdrawal number no. 5 bill later today. This is the Brexit-breaking bill that managed to scrape its way through the House of Commons in one day on the back of one single vote last Wednesday, followed by an attempt the next day to ram it through the Lords in a single day as well. This bill would, if it became law, force the government to keep on requesting Article 50 extensions from the EU until the Remain establishment had managed to work out a way to keep the UK in the EU as a full member, or worse still, as a vassal state using the Withdrawal Agreement Colony Status Treaty. Once again, just like last Thursday, the intention will be to get this done and dusted by close of play today, by ditching the House of Lords standing order that says no two stages of a bill can be taken in one day. What a surprise! This is despite the fact that Theresa May has already gone cap in hand to the EU to ask for a short extension. But the Cooper Bill is designed to impose on the government the requirement for the longest possible extension, not one of just a couple of weeks or so. Anyway, one of the little-known clauses that had been put in the bill was to make changing the date of Brexit in the 2018 Withdrawal Act really easy. And the reason they give for the inclusion of this clause is the lack of time as Friday the 12th looms. To do this, Clause 2 changes the type of statutory instrument to be used to amend Exit Day from an affirmative type to a negative type. It sounds a bit complicated, but what it means is that under the affirmative procedure, Government would need both Houses of Parliament to agree to it before the exit date was changed in the Withdrawal Act. But under the negative procedure, the date could be changed by the Government without any agreement from Parliament, so the decision to do so would not be scrutinised until well after the event, which could turn out to be a pointless process. The Remainers like the negative procedure here, because if they get the Cooper Bill through, they can order the government to ask for an Article 50 extension from the EU, then just change the date without having to argue it through Parliament first. Saves a lot of time, and more importantly for Remainers, prevents timely scrutiny. But the Delegated Powers Committee has taken a look at this, and it does not agree. The committee says that although time is of the essence, there is no need to resort to the negative process, and it recommends that Clause 2 should be removed from the bill, thereby restoring the affirmative procedure to statutory instruments amending exit day. It will be interesting to see whether the Lords vote with the committee's recommendations. On the wider issue of that bill, I expect we'll see the vastly outnumbered Brexiteer peers doing their level best to filibuster by keeping the debates going for as long as possible. But I also expect them to be swept aside by the sheer voting weight of the Remainers. Also in the House of Lords, the Tory peer, Lord Shinkwin, is due to ask the government what steps they took to ensure that parliamentarians were aware that the UK's date of exit from the EU could be changed by a decision of the European Council. That could be an interesting answer, if one is forthcoming. Now, there is no set time period between getting both Houses of Parliament to agree on a bill and it then being enacted by the Queen giving her royal assent. But the Lord Speaker, the Right Honourable the Lord Fowler, already has a slot set aside for announcing royal assent this evening, so I assume the Brexit-busting Cooper Act is now a done deal. Anyway, what do you think? Please leave a comment below and thank you for watching.